This is the Storm Arena Bowl Preview on TampaBayStorm.com and Facebook Live. Live from Amelie Arena, here's your host, Derek Sharp. And you just saw some of the great highlights from Arena Bowl Pass for the Tampa Bay Storm. They will be looking to add more to that highlight reel. In just a few days from now, it'll be Arena Bowl 30 and the Tampa Bay Storm are in it in Philadelphia. And to preview it, Derek Sharp here live from practice on TampaBayStorm.com. We have a pretty decent guest list coming up, Ron James, a couple of all arena players for the Tampa Bay Storm. We'll start things off if you haven't figured it out by now with the Storm president. Derek Brooks, I know last time we yes. talked, you were getting excited for a playoff <laughs> game. Different level? Oh, absolutely. And, you know, I, I really understand why that I did not like the bye week when I played uh, for the Bucks uh, because we stayed in the game mode. This bye week, waiting for this game, this coming Saturday, a lot of sleepless nights. <laughs> I'm very, very anxious to get it going. So I can imagine how the players have been feeling. But when we got back to practice, uh, we just kind of got into the flow week of work. And right now I'm excited. Uh, I think we put a good week of work in, a healthy roster as can be. And now the guys are finalizing the preparation for us to head up there tomorrow. That's a big thing. It's a, we're doing this on a Wednesday. The last time the team played was <laughs> last Monday, and we'll get to those highlights in just a second. Um, and how did you attack this extra time between games? I mean, there's only really so much you can do other than get healthy, maybe. Yes, uh, rest. Yeah, I think that was a big emotional win. Obviously, uh, Philadelphia played a couple of days earlier, so we tried to really merge the distance, if I may use that word, mm -hmm. by you know, rest and uh, guys took that time to get to know Phil a little better in the film room. Mm -hmm. So I think they used it in terms of the off field preparation because the coaches hadn't put the game plans in yet. So they tried to get ahead uh, assessing themselves and what we have not done the previous three times we sure. played them and obviously trying to see how well they played against Baltimore, trying to find one little edge uh, that can go our way this coming Saturday. Last time we did the show was uh, we avoided the topic of Philadelphia because yes. they were playing Cleveland. <laughs> what makes Philadelphia so strong? I know they got a great coach, but uh, what in the world can the Storm do to try and bridge that gap? Well, I think one is we got to have confidence. Uh, you know, we first time we played them down here, uh, we felt we gave that game away. And obviously the explosiveness that they have at the receiver position, they do a good job of complementing each other's role. So we just got to find a way to disrupt that timing and have timely pass rush opportunities, mm -hmm. which we didn't take advantage of last time we played them. Well, we had the quarterback, we didn't, we didn't bring him down, we let him escape. Uh, a couple times we had our hands on balls, yep. they would tip passes, they got to be picks against Philly. And we got to tackle their fullback, knowing that uh, he's an integral part of what they do and when we have him in our grasp, we got to bring him down. We can't let him continue to fall forward. Derek Brooks, how would you describe right now? I would say the, it has become the best rivalry of the teams right now in arena <laughs> football. And I know you feel that competitive edge, even though you can't get on the field with Ron Jaworski and the rest of the Philadelphia crew. How, how great would it be to, well, to beat I, this I, rival? Well, I had to make sure, you know, I had tickets for the game going to Jaworski. <laughs> you know, I had to call up there and make sure the tickets were purchased. Did they say, who is this? I don't know who this <laughs> exactly. is. Exactly. <laughs> but in all seriousness, uh, it's been some fr friendly competition. And Ron has been, uh, you know, Really a tremendous host this week. I uh, can't wait to get there to obviously assist them and all the promotions that we got moving forward for our Arena Bowl. But it's going to be intense. Uh, the best two teams have earned the right uh, to determine the championship. And if we want it, we got to go win it at their place. And I think we have an opportunity that's before us that I'm looking forward to us capitalizing on. You mentioned the intensity. It's always there when th these teams play. I can only imagine mm -hmm. what it's like right before and maybe for the first few plays of a championship game. You've been through that process. Yes. How do you calm yourself down? Do you maybe let it go for a little while? No, Coach James uh, spoke to our players about that. Hey, let's make sure, you know, we win the competition of composure, not mm -hmm. have any personal files that go against us. You know, you're so jacked up into emotions that you lose you know, assignments, uh, some routine that you forget because you're so jacked up. The intensity uh, of the game is going to take care of itself, but we got to win the competition composure and use that to our advantage. And last thing you just br brought up, Coach James, I mean, to bring him in, we knew about his experience, but this will be his first time making it to a championship game. Great call on your part, first of <laughs> all, and secondly, how have you seen him operate through these playoffs and the lead up? Well, he's done a great job of leading our football team this year, uh, and the veterans respond. Uh, he's been prepared on every level, 
and I expect for him to have our team prepared to finish the job this coming Saturday night. So, again, we're excited to uh, have him and, and be a part of uh, our franchise for a very long time. Thank you very much, Derek. As we're talking about oh, him, we can you. hear him giving that last pep talk, and we're pretty <laughs> pumped for the game on Saturday night. But before we get more to that with some of the players and Coach James, the Storm did a pretty good job in their first playoff game. Nice. It was a little crazy for a while, but it got uh, really good at the end, especially a 73-59 victory as we take you through some of those highlights. And the Storm at home for the first time since 2010, believe it or not, the last time they'd actually won a playoff game. Got off to a strong start there with Go Figure, Randy Hipper, Joe Hills, a couple of honorees making it seven to nothing. But Arvell Nelson found a new target that was back with him for the first time in a month in Quentin Sims. It was seven to six after the missed extra point. Extra points would be advantageous for the Storm in this particular game. Mark Brown, boy, we told you to watch out for him and he makes his presence felt there early on. It is another touchdown for the Tampa Bay Storm. There's that Quentin Sims character, ends up with five touchdowns on the game, and the Storm at that time were up 14 to 13. Kendrick Ings, again, foreshadowing, will give you some honorees from the league as they had their first team and second team all arena selections announced this week. I can go ahead and hint you, he, that guy right there is on a couple of them. That big kick return makes it a good setup for the start of the second quarter and allows for this to restore the Tampa Bay Storm lead to a one score touchdown, 20 to three at that time. Kenny Veal, not the biggest kick returner in the league, but still has uh, had his moments. And this was a big one for Cleveland as he returns it 38 yards against Storm. Have to watch out for one Quentin Sims. It was this part of the game where it looked like he was maybe gonna be unstoppable all alone there. And Cleveland draws back to within a couple of points. Randy Hippard goes deep for a fantastic catch by Kendrick Gangs. That was the fourth straight drive, folks where the Storm just needed two plays to get in, but that was a tough one. Cleveland, again, gets the margin down to 28-26. Jeremy Richardson seems like the Storm will be playing the two best running backs in the league back-to-back. -back. Extra points. This is about the time when Cleveland decided going for two might be an option in this game because that keeps it 28-26. But then the Storm played the ball control game, and basically Cleveland knew it was coming, and they kept him out of the end zone. So instead of that comfortable halftime lead start the second half with the ball here's what happens instead a late touchdown Cleveland is up 32 28 looks like that would be the halftime score because there are only nine seconds left two point conversion fails and the storm would they be able to get on the board in just nine seconds of play answer is he look at this oh totally right through the uprights no question about it Mark Lewis a 30 yard field goal to make it 32 31 at the half so the storm were hoping to have that nine point lead and the ball, well, they still had the ball, and it didn't take long to get going. Look at Kendrick Kings, the longest gain you can have in arena football without scoring. From the one to the one, 48 yards, big play to start off the second half. And then Randy Hippard scoots it on in. He would have some key rushing touchdowns this season. That was one of his easier ones. Jeremy Richardson, though, at this time, puts Cleveland back on top. So we were in that mode that it was going to be a back and forth game. Would the Storm be able to get a stop? Because Cleveland felt the momentum. You, even though the Storm were scoring, as is the case here, Hippard 17 yards to Joe Hills, making it 44 to 39. And although Mark Lewis would miss this extra point, it's clear that he was thinking about his next kick, which was going to be an onside kick. We'll talk to head coach Ron James about it. It was successfully recovered. It was perfect, and that really changed the entire game because the Storm had a chance to score with the lead and make it a two-score game, and they did. Randy Hippard, three yards, another great catch by Kendrick Kings, makes it 50 to 39. He even was the target on the very next play, a two-point conversion, and the Storm would lead 52 to 39. Again, all this created by the onside kick. Defense made a stop to start the game, but that was it. And the next kickoff, Kenny Veal. You know, Cleveland hadn't had the ball for a good solid 10 minutes of game time at this time, and he gets them back on track again to the Storm. We're able to get that margin up to two scores thanks to the onside kick. So the rest of the way, really they had the advantage despite more good work from Arvell Nelson. You'll see an incredible catch by this guy, Mike Preston, in a second, but that one made it 52 to 45. The pooch kickoff, again, Storm have the onside kick thing worked out. Other teams, uh, still a work in progress. And so with a good field position, the Storm are able to rebuild that two score lead. Joe Hills, once you get that little distance between he and a defensive back, it is over 58-46 at the time. Nelson, here's that catch. 
unbelievable. We just assumed there's no way that ball didn't hit the turf, but he got his hands underneath it, and he thought, my goodness, what's going to happen? Are they really going to have plays like that? But no, the Storm not only recovered the onside kick, but that goes for a touchdown for Joe Hills. The onside kick recovery immediately restores the lead to two scores at 65-53. And even though Quentin Sims, who had the four TDs in the first half, would get number five here, might have pushed off, probably did. Uh, it makes it 66-59. Extra point miss, so there was a nice little comfort level there. Had to do an onside kick again, did Cleveland, and they recovered it before it got to 10 yards, allowing for the Storm to have the chance to get over 70, which would be their all-time record for points in a playoff game. Yes, the explanation there of the 10 yard seed. It just, <laughs> you don't take for granted what the Storm do on onside kicks until you see other teams do it and not do it so well. This was a big play though, still in the last minute at a seven point game, and that was a third down play. Randy Hippard, no one to throw it to, runs it in, turns out to be a big score. And even though Cleveland would still have a chance to do some work here, the final score would stay at 73 to 59. They actually get sacked as a Jordan Miller puts down Arvell Nelson. So with one second left, they're losing by 14. Cleveland says, let's call a timeout. Let's pad our stats on the last play of the game. We don't want to go out being sacked. So they go out like this instead, getting intercepted as Lamarck Brown. Look at that. Could have ran it back. Could have put up 79 points. But there's some quality sportsmanship there and an end of game. Celebration, 73-59. It's at that point that the Tampa Bay Storm know they are going to the Arena Bowl. And that's what we're here to preview there's the stats man Hippard seven touchdowns Kendrick Kings all over the place as he has been all year and solid performances by all three receivers and never in the stats of course successful onside kicks but that is a big thing for the Tampa Bay Storm this year Mark Lewis did his thing again maybe it'll come down to some special teams on Saturday night a man who knows a little bit about that part of the game and every aspect of the team will be joining us in just a little bit it'll be the storm against Philadelphia because just two days before the Storm's victory, it was Philadelphia, actually against a very game Baltimore team. Shane Boyd, the backup quarterback, had to play in this game and had them within a score the most times throughout. But Philadelphia got a key defensive stop midway through the fourth quarter, and that's how they held on to win that baby, 69-54. to Head coach Ron James just finished up practice, and he is going to give us his thoughts right now, just three days before Arena Bowl. When we return, you're watching us on TampaBayStorm.com and Facebook Live. Pep talks abounding today along with some just regular old playoff knowledge as you're watching us live on TampaBayStorm.com. Derek Sharp now joined again by the head coach of the Tampa Bay Storm, Ron James. And coach, all right, last time we talked, it was getting ready for a big playoff game, but don't worry, I'm not going to make it all about you. Your first trip to the Arena Bowl, uh, how's it going right now? Oh, we're excited about it. You know, it, obviously you, when you're in a situation that it, you're on a top of the mountain so to speak and, and just trying to plant your flag and, and getting ready for the last game it's, a, it's an exciting time and I think all of our players right now are keyed up. Uh, you've done so well with uh, the elemental parts of the game but uh, as you come to a championship game where other start other stuff can become involved a lot of out there not, not distractions per se but thoughts going through players heads have you had to work more on the mental part of the game at least? Yeah it's not a typical game for us I mean we're going to Philadelphia we've been there before but you know, in the biggest game of the year with the, with the league hosting the, the event and a lot of different events going around outside the game, sure. it's important for us really to, to retain our focus and keep things as normal as possible. Well, it looked pretty normal and great in the first round of the playoffs. Uh, did they, uh, onside kick notwithstanding, I mean, that seems to be a big thing in every, in every part of the game, but it really turned the game around. Uh, the onside kick, the offense, everything was rolling along pretty much according to plan, I take it. You know, I, th I thought that offensively, outside the stop right before the first half was sure. over with, uh, you know, we kind of did what we wanted to do. Uh, we did get the big turnover on, on the onside kick. That was that was critical sure. and, and gave us the extra possession we were looking for, for, you know, to finish the game up. But, and the defense, you know, played timely defense. We got the stop in the beginning of the game. You know, it, it was a game that I knew that Cleveland was going to give us everything they had, and they did, and, and it was a very competitive game. But at the end, we just kind of pulled away and held the lead that we had. Something else to see Randy Hippert operate, of course, is we've talked about the receivers before, and just to see him not only operate in a tense situation like that, but do it so well. Uh, and then you can see this week that he and Joe Hills and Kendrick Ingus get all the arena honors. That's got to make you pretty proud. You know, I'm proud as a coach for the, the players' accomplishments. It's just, you know, kind of the icing on the cake because they've had a great season, and the things that they've been able to accomplish as a team are a lot more important, and they, they would say the same thing. But the individual accolades are just a, a pat on the back, so to speak, to, to say that, yes, we've had a good season, and these guys are a big reason why. 
Now we can finally talk about the opponent, as we couldn't last time, that it was likely going to be Philadelphia. Mm -hmm. um, what makes the soul so good? Your counterpart, head coach Clint Dalzell, knows what he's doing as a former player and kind of an expert of the league as well. You know, Clint's been around the league for a long time, and I had I had the good fortune actually to coach him as who's a, my quarterback in Las Vegas. At, you know, when I was with the Gladiators, and I, I think that you know he's an outstanding football coach. He's got the, the great mind for the game. Always did. Even as a player, he was calling his own plays. He was an offensive coordinator. And, you know, he developed into, you know, one of the elite uh, head coaches in this league. And he's got a great staff, too. Sure. he got guys like Phil Bogle and, and Bernie Nowatarski and some of these guys that are helping him out are, are excellent football coaches. And so we're going to have to be up to the task. Their offense is just a well-oiled machine. Darius Reynolds, Dan Rodham, everybody with initials DR. Um, mm -hmm. What makes them so good? I know they have a unique approach. They seem to do a lot, lot more short passing, and they're very efficient. Well, the, the biggest thing that makes them good is that the shorthand is there. They know each other so well. Mm. They've been playing with each other so so often and so for so many years. And, and when you look at their situation, I mean, the quarterback head coach relationship is one of the most integral relationships you're going to have in arena football. And Dan Rodabaugh has been with Clint now, I think, for seven or eight years. So they, they know each other inside and out. And that, that's what makes them go. I mean, having the ability to, to just not even have to say anything and know where a receiver is going to be, not even say anything and, and know how to play the game. And, uh, you know, they're at that point and they're a well-oiled machine. Well, you got to have the machine perfectly oiled for a game like this. Yeah. You, you realize it's probably not going to be a blowout. So maybe it comes down to something small. Have you had to Without saying what, of course, have you had to add something to the game plan a little bit this week in anticipation of having to do something a little bit different? We've added things in every area. And actually, there were some things that we looked at adding the last game of the year up in Philadelphia and held back on. Okay. So uh, there's some things we've been working at for, for weeks, and that's not to discount the playoff game that sure. we played, but that is to say that you, know, you have to have something a little extra in, in your back pocket for a big game like this, and we do. And we're definitely not telling you Philadelphia, so if you're watching. <laughs> uh, the thing that Derek Brooks was able to say that with the extra time between games, it's not always great to have extra time between games, but in this case, maybe it's helped with getting everybody some rest. How's the health of the team? We're, we're fairly healthy. I mean, as healthy as you can be after, after playing as many games as we've played on this hard surface, and, and the, the players are keyed up and ready to go. So I, I think health is not going to be an issue in this. The issue is going to be what it is every game, taking care of the football and making sure that you know, we do things according to our plan and, and not on their schedule. So schedule-wise, uh, leading up to Friday is going to be kind of the day where we get to meet with the league and everybody's going to learn about the MVP and that kind of thing. Mm -hmm. um, it's not, again, not a distraction, but would you rather just be a, a straightforward lead up to a game or do you sort of take it, hey, listen, it's the Arena Bowl, so there's going to be some extra stuff surrounding the game? Yeah, you know, we're going to enjoy every minute of it, just being in, you know, in this atmosphere and knowing that it's the biggest game of the year. Having that extra time gives us more time to prepare. Um, it actually helped out a little bit with some of the nagging injuries that we had as well. Uh, the other side of the coin is, you know, we thought we were rolling pretty good after the playoff sure. game and to go into the next week and have it right away. Uh, that would have been fine with us too, but you know the schedule is what it is, and uh, we'll be ready to go. You're talking about leading on your coach, coaching staff, and that kind of thing. Are there certain players that maybe you pull on more this week to talk to some of the players? And Alvin Ray Jackson, this will be his third game in the last four years, and I know he's a, you're a big fan of his. Are there certain leaders on the team that you're really going to count on this week, leading up preparation-wise? Well, the biggest thing is to lean on that leadership because they've been there before as kind of the the atmosphere of the game, more, sure. not just the X and O's. I mean, they're great players, and they'll they'll be able to handle all of that. But it's more about, you know, how do you approach this game? You know, how, you've been there before. What's been some of the pitfalls? How can we avoid those? Mm -hmm. Th those type of conversations that we've been having all week long. So I think, you know, we're prepared as much as we can be for the X's and O's. And now we, we have to be ready for the, the atmosphere of the game and, and kind of the, the intensity that the championship game brings. And last thing, back to you for one, because it's been, you know, this is your 20th year in arena football. You get hearing from some of your old uh, cohorts, wishing you luck, that kind of thing. Yeah, and it's great. I mean, I, I love hearing from former players and guys that, that, I, that I've coached in this league in particular, and they're saying, you know, Coach, congratulations, but let's go get the ring. You yes. Know, and guys, guys that are supportive of me over the years, it's great to have that feedback. It's, it's also great to know that there are a lot of fans that really care about not only the Tampa Bay Storm, but the individual players we have and coaches. And I, I just, I relish the moments like this and, and we've been looking forward to it for a very long time. I'm not going to say that they're planning a celebration or anything, but fans, make sure you check it out on Saturday night and what would it mean to be able to bring it home to the fans? It'd be everything to us. I mean, we're, we're looking forward to the bringing a win back and, and letting the Tampa Bay community enjoy that. It's been such a long time 
since the storm, we're able to hang a championship banner up top. And, and we talked about that from day one. We don't shy away from that responsibility. And we understand that it's a difficult undertaking up in Philadelphia. But we're up for that challenge, eager to get it done, and uh, just anxious to get on the field. Man, no kidding. That'll be on Saturday night. Thank you very much, Coach Thank James. You. We'll be keeping an eye on you. Boy, he just gets me going when he mentions raising banners. <laughs> I'll help if they need me to. We'll have a couple of the key players, all arena, first team selections. Alvin Ray Jackson and Randy Hippert as we continue along on our Arena Bowl 30 preview here on TampaBayStorm.com and Facebook Live. I'm Derek Sharp here and we just ran through the first team all arena selections. The last man we mentioned, did we save the best for last? I think we did with Alvin Ray Jackson who joins us now. Alvin Ray, thank you very much for coming on, buddy, you. and you've been a big part of the team. And we know you wear number 16. I want you to tell people why you wear this number 29 for practice. Well, um, actually, the number I wore my whole career has been 17. Oh, 17, I'm sorry. Right, where <laughs> sorry. I wear, I'm number 16, <laughs> but I wore 16 this year. I have a cousin that uh, was killed in an autom automobile accident last June, June wow. 18th. So he wore 66. Gotcha. And so I changed my number this year to 16, and Kendra had 17 when I gotcha. came. Well, yeah, that's and it's going to happen, right? Know, yeah. And, uh, and I wear 29 in practice because his father died when I was 22 of cancer. Wow. Yeah. So he wore 29 when he played, so I decided to wear what a 29 great, in practice and 16 in the game. What a great tribute. And I, you know, yeah. I knew there had to be a reason, and God bless you. I know yeah. he'll be checking you out on Saturday night. You're getting yeah. excited for the game, man. Yeah, man. How excited. I know you're kind of a leader out there. You're vocal in that, but have you had, you, you know, there's so much time between our last two games. You had to try and pace yourself a little bit. Well, uh, the excitement is, is crazy because, you know, we had a week in between and, and I'm used to playing every week. <laughs> and, and, you know, I'm itching to get back out there and uh, I'm just, I can't wait. I can't wait to Saturday. And it's, at first I wasn't that excited, but as the days go by, mm. it's building up and uh, I get to play in my third one. And yeah, I lost two. And this <laughs> one, I'm excited to get back out there and get another chance. Yeah, I, I, I've been very careful not to mention the history between the uh, soul and the storm because <laughs> man, we're not, we're not going to do that. But <laughs> what can you bring from your experience as far as playing in these games uh, to some of your teammates? Well, I understand how it feels to be there. It's a, it's a totally different feeling. Hmm. Uh, the energy is totally different. Um, you know, guys know this is the last game. so plays that some guys may take off they won't take off this this hmm. game right here and and um you know the attitudes are going to be totally different you know uh usually when we make it to the arena you know you hug each other former teammates or friends or, and, and 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 you chit chat for a minute before pre-game warm-ups when you do your own stuff but in arena bowl that really doesn't happen guys yeah. are pretty much to themselves and you know you don't want to talk to those guys and and, you know, I, I don't want them to feel I'm their friend. You know, I, <laughs> I'm their enemy come this week because this game is very much important. Probably a chance of a little bit more uh, trash talk than normal. Uh, not before the game, but once it gets going, I bet you it just gets extremely intense. Well, you know what? That's, it's, it's, it's very intense, and, it, and it's so so intense that it seems like no one has time to talk trash. Hmm. So you don't hear a lot of trash talk in, in, a, in a championship game. It's more, it's very quiet out there, you know, as far as, teams talking to each other you know it just like everybody is so focused in on what they're supposed to do you're just trying to get your job done you know I gotta ask you speaking of getting the job done I mean when did you start to hone your skills as far as ball skills go as far as playmaking skills I was just talking about how the jack linebacking position you know hasn't been that great here the last few years and I knew about you obviously and you just yeah. go right back into it. when did you start to become that sort of a player well um Growing up, uh, I was the son of a coach, and uh, so I was always around football. And, um, you know, and the kids in the neighborhood, you know, I, I like to give a lot of credit to them. What neighborhood the are we talking about? What city? In Como, Mississippi, and Sardis, nice. Mississippi. Nice. Uh, I grew up in both of those places, and, you know, we didn't have footballs because we would lose them. And <laughs> so we would play with cans and pine cones and soccer balls and tennis balls and little things like that. And I think at home, my ball, make, my playmaking skills a lot. And, you know, and then along with a father and friends and cousins that play, I think a lot of those things helped my IQ. And so, you know, um, I think that's, that's has came to help me a lot as I got older. Yeah. Hey, man, if you're trying, if you're playing with pine cones, getting <laughs> football is nothing, man. It doesn't stick. It's easy to handle. I got to ask you one thing. I've always wanted to call you by a nickname. I mean, is it ARJ? Is it Alvin? Ray? Uh, what, I have, do you have one? So it's, have, it seems like it's screaming for a nickname, your name. I have so many names. Um, uh, Big Play Ray. Is, I like Big that. Play Alvin Ray is what I've always called it ever since college, but it seems like Ray McNeil wants to take the name. So, you know, um, 
Hey, call me Al Ray, Al Ray, A Ray, uh, AR Seventeen. You know that's been the most recent AR Seventeen. Well, you're making so. my point for me. You have you a know. lot of great nicknames yeah, in this game. So. How would it, how would it feel to be called a champion though? That's that's the goal. Um, they can have the All Arena. They can have the interceptions. <laughs> if I can have this championship, I'll give it all back. Awesome. Hey, yeah. best of luck. You've been doing a great job this Appreciate year. Appreciate it. Thank you. Alvin Ray Jackson is yes, the man. Sir. we got one more man to talk to. See if we <laughs> give him a nickname for Randy Hippert. I'll get one during the break. <laughs> back live. Glitches and all. But quality information. Derek Sharp here with the Tampa Bay Storm Arena Bowl 30 playoff preview. One thing I haven't shown you, a little behind the scenes stuff here. Now it's going to be in front of the scenes. I just love that the Storm have their five rings on their, their, their notes. And Randy Hippard, quarterback of the Storm, you want to add number six pretty badly, I would imagine. Absolutely, absolutely. Anytime you can bring more prestige to already a historic program like the Storm, it, it's something we, we strive for and want to give our fans. And you played so well as the, the entire team uh, against Cleveland. Uh, were there any nerves at all? Because it sure didn't look like it. No, I, I think it's something, you know, we played that team what, three or four times in the regular season, so we knew each other. You know, it was going to be one of those back and forth games, and, and luckily the defense made a few plays, and Mark Lewis made a play right there for the onside kick, which I think was a game changer. I've heard he may or may not, and we're not going to tell, Philly's watching, we're not telling you anything, but he may or may not have some tricks up his sleeves. Do you have to have something a little extra maybe without saying what it is against a team like Philadelphia? Yeah, absolutely, and I'm sure they got something extra for us too, sure. you know. Anytime uh, you come into a game like this, you know, uh, your back's against the wall, you're coming out swinging, you're throwing everything out there that you have on the field, you, you can leave nothing left in your pocket. I like playing the underdog role, but I know you guys don't truly feel, oh boy, they're, they're supposed to win that kind of thing. You know you can win. What's it going to take? Uh, it, it's going to take uh, just like uh, the, we had the preacher talking about, relentless pursuit, you know, Love just that. across the board, you know. So we gotta, we're going to have to execute. They, I think they've got six or seven all-arena guys just on defense alone, you mm. know. So, so for us to come out offensively and be prepared for that and be prepared for, for the things they're going to show at us, it, it's going to be big. You mentioned some of the guys on defense, guys like Hollis and Romain and, and Bo Bell, who is just – seems like lives in the backfield uh, pretty good defense yeah absolutely and, and they're gonna bring it they bring it each and every week that's a uh, defensive play of the year in Hollis and, and another one who's right up there with them in Romaine and and just the way that Dolezal has those guys playing together you know we're gonna have to be perfect on offense and, and we're gonna have to stop their offense got to bring up Kent Richardson because you know they, they add that guy maybe through absolutely. the season another absolutely. big part of the secondary but you guys have what have what it takes uh, have you guys had to you've had a little extra time to maybe think more preparation wise for the game talk to each other about how not to lose your mind uh, on Saturday when it's going to be a little crazy. Yeah, absolutely. You know, the, we, and we've been preaching all week, you know, something's not going to go our way, whether mm. it, whether it's a, a play on our end or, or a play they make or, or a bad call or a missed call. You know, it, it, something's going to happen, and it's how we react to those moments that's going to get us through this game. All right, so last thing. I mean, you, you can play for a championship. I know you've probably not allowed yourself to get too over crazy about it, but have you allowed yourself to think what – what it might be like to win one and bring one back to Tampa Bay and what it's going to like if it happens. Yeah, absolutely. I, I'm a big uh, visual guy. I, I like to visual, visualize our game plan and the plays I do before before they happen. And, and anytime you go into this situation, you, you visualize the success. You visualize yourself celebrating and, and carrying the trophy. And, and, uh, and that's exactly what we're going to go out there and try to do. And maybe if you do, you can celebrate with a cheesesteak right there at the Wells Fargo Center. Absolutely. Right in front of everybody. Absolutely. All right, so that's going to do it for our TampaBayStorm.com live Arena Bowl preview. I know it sounds great. Remember, you can watch the game. There you go, at AFL.Twitter.com. Listen to it with the great Jason Dixon. He is on 1250 WHNZ and also on TBL Power Play. If you don't have the iHeartMedia app, we'll get it just for this game if you need to. Coverage starts at 6.30 for a 7 o'clock kickoff. Thanks to everybody that helped put the show together. Randy Hipford, best of luck, my friend. Thanks, Derek. You don't need it. Just beat Philadelphia. <laughs> I'm glad we can finally talk about the opponent. Right, right. The opponent is coming up against the storm Saturday night. Thanks for checking us out.